Joining me today, we got Johnny Blaze Tapia, professional boxer out of Brownsville, Texas. Man, thanks for joining me, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, bro. Let's start off with um, how you got into boxing, like just combat sports in general. Did mm -hmm. you play other sports growing up? Like, how did all that start? Uh, no, actually, my dad uh, introduced me to martial arts uh, as early as five years old. Okay. Uh, I do have a black, a third degree black belt in Taekwondo. Oh, wow. I uh, I did a little bit of kickboxing as a kid and uh, uh, you know, some grappling. You know, nothing, nothing big. But originally, to your to your question, um, I never thought I was going to be a, a a boxer. As a okay. matter of fact, I remember as a little kid, my dad used to come back from work real late at night. He was a, he was a nurse. He always had like three three jobs, so he would come home relatively late. And back in the day, we had those VCRs, uh, the, you know, yeah, the yeah, tapes, yeah. right? And uh, he used to always come come home with the the old school UFC fights. Oh yeah, you know, well, we Royce talk, Gracie, and Royce Gracie, and Dan Shamrock, Shamrock, Ken Shamrock, all those good guys, right? The old school guys. Um, and uh, we lived in a really really small house. So uh, when he would come home, I would hear the door. I was supposed to be asleep already with my mom, and I would kind of like sneak away, you know, make sure she didn't notice. And I used to sneak uh, to to the living room. And uh, my dad would be watching those, you know, uh, UFC fights. those UFC fights. Yeah. And uh, that's, I mean, to me, I was four or five years old. Something about combat sports, uh, spectator sports like that. Um, it just, you know, yeah. I've, I've been uh, fascinated by it since yeah. I was a kid. No, I guess to, to me, like the, the combat sports, like the especially the one-on-one -on -one sports mm -hmm. where like it's everything is focused on you. There's no team element. There's no team aspect to it. To me, it's always been fascinating how people can psych themselves out to be like, I want to be that. You know, I want to be a one-on-one -on -one competitor. Like, Absolutely. That's, that's crazy. I, I think it's, uh, uh, you know, in a team sport, if the team's not having a bad day, you're having a great day and uh, you're, you're playing your A game, but somebody in the team messes up, you know, uh, you're allowed to say, hey, well, you know what? It was their fault. Yeah. All right. But at the same time, when they win... It's everybody's fault as well. It's not yeah. you. I, I've always believed that, hey, you know what, these sports, we're in the uh, combat sports in general, man. I think that are the, you know, the the, the best, the best kind of sport because you're yourself. Like I said, yeah, it's yeah. you against you, uh, you and against somebody else. Yeah. Can't, blame, cage, can't blame nobody else. You can't blame nobody yeah. else. You can't blame nobody because, hey, you already did your training camp throughout the, the training period. When you're in the ring, it's you and your fault. You, you win, you win, you yeah. lose. You're in, you know, there's nobody to blame. Right. So yeah. when did you make, I guess the decision to focus on boxing and not <laughs> yeah. try mixed martial arts. So, um, again, boxing was, uh, I got introduced to boxing coincidentally by, uh, I was watching the first boxing fight that I remember I ever saw was a, a hall of famer, um, Johnny Lee Tapia. It was, okay. uh, maybe La loca. And I remember we were, we were in the living room and my dad, uh, you know, psyched me up. Hey, look, he's got your name. He's got your name. So, <laughs> That's, I remember he was fighting uh, Mar uh, Antonio Barrera. Okay. And he lost that fight, of course. Uh, Johnny Tapia lost that fight. But I was so excited that there was a boxer that had my name. Wow. So when I was 12, I, I kept telling my dad, hey, dad, I want to I wanna try boxing. I want to try boxing. I want to try boxing. And um, we, went to, we went to the gym here downtown. And uh, when we first got in, I remember my, I, I, my current coach is Robert Campos. <laughs> Uh, we, we was a person that he was hitting the speed bag without a shirt. You know, uh, people were training in the ring and they were sparring. Actually, they were sparring. And it was so brutal compared to the sparring that Taekwondo uh, mm. has, right? So I can tell my, my uh, as, as a little kid, my dad's face was like, uh-uh, like I don't want to, you know, because of the nature of the sport, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, my son's not doing that. Yeah, <laughs> right. So I already knew that my dad was going in with a mentality of, hey, you know what? Let's, let's first see what this is all about. Yeah. And I remember um, we talked to the coach. The coach was hitting this double end bag, really didn't acknowledge us until the round ended. As soon as the round ended, okay, he wiped the sweat, it was a towel, whatever. And, uh, you know, we started asking questions about information, how we join. And uh, one of the questions my dad asked, I remember, and, um, uh, but you're going to match him up with somebody more or less his height, his size, right? <laughs> and the coach said, uh, like, in the streets, you're not going to be finding, you're not going to be <laughs> finding a, a scale, right? Yeah. So that in itself kind of like, was the turn off for my dad? Yeah, I'm like, nope. Like, nah, we're out. Okay, well, we'll talk about it. Well, I mean, right? As soon as we're walking out, I was like, you're not gonna join this gym. You know, like I said, I, I want to do boxing because I was. I feel like I've always been a martial artist uh, rather than a boxer. Okay. I, I martial arts, uh, taekwondo. Like I said, I, I was, I was uh, well rounded. I feel, mm -hmm. and I needed boxing in a in a sense uh, to add on to my arsenal. I see. Because the bigger picture for me, even as a young kid, um, is was to 
fight in UFC. I see. Uh, you know, UFC, MMA, right? Um, only problem is that back in the day, the, the, the smallest division was 155. So in a sense, MMA was kind of like far reach. And yeah. I was, I was a short, I was always a little guy. Yeah. You know, if I'm small right now, can you imagine me at 12, 15 years old, you know, 13, yeah. 15 years old? So, um, uh, I, I got introduced back to boxing when I was 15 and I did it actually, um, uh, like in, in secret. I had my aunt who who found me uh used to work for the city and there was a coach there so that was actually he she told me hey Mijo, there's a there's a coach there let's you know let's get you in let's try it out and uh so i went i actually went the first day my aunt took me and um tried it out i trained for about a couple of days obviously my dad knew my dad uh comes comes to practice with me my third or fourth day and uh he said okay let's give it a try so a week later I get my first sparring. Wow. I get my first, I know, right? It's just quick. <laughs> a week later, I get my first sparring. And he was, uh, he was, he, they put, they matched me up against a guy that had a couple of amateur fights. Right? I, I, I recall he had like four or five amateur fights. Very kid. And my dad told me at the beginning, he's like, okay, Mijo, hey, I'm going to see if you want to go, go home with this or we're not. Okay, because, you know, he still had that image of yeah. when I was back when I was 12, we saw those guys sparring, beating their brains out yeah. and stuff. So he's like, we're going to see. Let's see. Let's just check it out. Just say, just try to, you know. <clears throat> but I'll tell you one thing. My dad uh, my dad would always tell me, be aggressive, be aggressive, be aggressive. In karate, yeah. when I used to spar, he used to be putting on my headgear and, hey, Nico, be aggressive. Needless to say, I did really, really good for that. my first sparring. I actually, I mean, without sounding too, you know, cocky or nothing, I... I outboxed this guy that had four amateur fights. Wow. And my second week Your of sparring. second week of sparring. I yeah. was just, you know, doing really good. So after that, my dad said, okay, let's, let's continue. Wow. Right. So that's how I got introduced to boxing. I know we talked about this off, off camera, but you, you did a little street fighting or backyard type fights growing <laughs> up. But as I was thinking that was just going to be boxing, but you, yeah. you had some like yeah. grappling and some ground and pound. Like it wasn't like a street fight. They were more organized. They were like organized, uh, sanctioned events, if you will. You know, it was yeah. it was like hey, <laughs> Mid- you know, middle what? school sanctioned. Yeah, fights. exactly. <laughs> it was high school, and um, even middle school. I, I remember we, middle school. I, I went. I would. I would come home sometimes with a hood, with a hoodie. They beat me up and stuff. I'm not one of those guys gonna claim to be undefeated because I yeah. wasn't. I got my butt kicked a couple of times, and uh, I remember I, sometimes I'd get bruised up and everything. I kind of hide and uh, when we used to sit down for dinner I used to just try to be like right here so yeah. make sure my parents don't see what I was up to but uh a lot of my childhood uh, peers would uh would advocate for me uh could advocate could testify for me that I mean it was like almost uh hey this lunch hey that was gonna fight hey that wow. was gonna fight and as, as I showed you the video yeah <laughs> I showed you the video it's still I got like two videos there on YouTube that were there but obviously I, I fought a couple I fought more times but that I remember there was two videos I just thought it'd be something fun that a lot of people don't might not know, but yeah, it's always been in me to not only compete mm-hmm. in these combat sports, but also the fact that it's uh, I, I like the, the adrenaline in, of like the entertainment the part entertainment of it? part of it. Okay, you know, I mean, I, I remember as a kid, my one of my favorite movies was Gladiator. Yeah, I know it's nothing compared to no, boxing. Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah, but, but it's, it's the, the, still like a show. You know? Exactly, like you're you're there in front of people, all eyes on you, mm-hmm. and uh, it's just the adrenaline that yeah, yeah. till this day I still feel. Wow. So I knew early on that I, I wanted to be an entertainer in that aspect, you know, because boxing is uh, boxing MMA. It's a spectator sport. Without right. the spectators, then yeah. you're fighting for no reason. You get me? Did you Did you play any other sports growing up that weren't combat <laughs> sports? Uh, I attempted to. I tried, but um, like, like soccer like, or football. I, no, or anything? and it's crazy because my 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 mom's side of the family we got a lot of soccer players, and uh, I, I'm not gonna lie and say I didn't want to try because as uh-huh. a kid I remember thinking, hey, I want to I want to try you know baseball. Middle school came, and um, this is what pretty much sealed the deal when it comes to sports because I played a little bit of basketball. I was never really like good, you know. I was. Okay, I wanted. I it was me for me. It was more fun of you yeah. know being part of a team. But uh, what sealed the deal for me was uh, I show up to football practice on football tryouts, and I'll never forget. And it's kind of uh, an embarrassing moment in, in, in <laughs> as a kid that uh, till the day probably traumatizes me a little bit. I showed up to to tryouts. Coach looks at me and says, "Okay, no, uh, okay, no, you're going to the C team." Damn, I ain't give me a try. 
So I said, nah, man, you know what? And that's and, and that's considering the fact that the football teams down here in Brownsville, I mean, not to talk bad, okay? You yeah. know, I'm probably going to get a lot of heat for this. Brownsville's, <laughs> uh, Brown, Brownsville, um, Brownsville football team is not exactly the best thing, but for me right. to... They they put me on a C team. To me, was like, man, yeah, that's disrespectful. You didn't yeah. give me a try. You didn't give me a try. You, I could be faster than everybody I on the probably team. Probably faster, yeah. And then you know, maybe I was gonna be good at that. But yeah. to me, it was like, no, that's a seal deal. I'm not gonna. I'd rather just do sports that, you know. Yeah, that's fair I'm, enough. I'm, yeah. So, that's actually the the truth behind that. So I never played other sports. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, as a professional boxer, what is it like having, I guess, your dad as your as your, is, as your main trainer? Is he your main trainer or is he just? Um, your coach, your mental coach. Uh, my dad, it's it's like anything. Like I guess, uh, there's head coach and then there's head of the team. And I feel like my dad's that's that spot there cemented. Like, yeah. and that's something that uh, any coach that trains me needs to understand that that my dad's always going to be in the corner with me. Um, so he's my head. He's my main motivator. I yeah. believe you know because uh, I always tell him, man, that whenever you're here with me and I'm training, I just something about it i get motivated yeah. do you ever butt heads with him like that all like, the time be harder we, on me or like we, we, don't say that kind no of stuff. We, we butt heads all the time our main our main uh issue is always about my weight <laughs> okay you know he'll always be like hey you need to watch what you eat and i get him i get mad i get hey you know you you watch what you, <laughs> you eat, watch what you eat, man you're not you the know? one boxing <laughs> exactly and that's always like but that's our main issue yeah. it's always been like that but um like t like during training or just getting ready for a fight and or just all the time just we have a great relationship with me and my dad and yeah. um uh but yes we tend to butt heads a lot particularly like that uh weight weight cutting weight training my ways of eating i without my dad being there i feel you know i feel lost yeah, yeah. no that, that's good man I, I know a lot of people <coughs> have their i can't say their parents by by default just because they want somebody there all the time so how do you how do you keep that relationship where yes he's my dad but i need him to be harder on me or you yeah. know what i don't agree with you i'm going to tell you the way it is yeah. you know how do you keep that boundary at the beginning it was more uh, there was some several times where we used to butt heads, but he needs to he understands now that he, this is, you know, you're not just my dad. You're, hey, we're in a team here. Yeah. But above all, I never just I I try not to disrespect my dad, and even when we have um, issues and stuff. I mean, we never let it get. And if we do, sometimes argue a little bit. Um, I I'm usually whether I'm right, whether I think I'm right or wrong, I'm usually the one that. Yeah. Now or later, that you know what. I'm sorry, pups. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's it. But uh, it never gets too personal. It never or, like, gets you just stop talking. Anymore. And uh, no, no, no. And uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of parents out there that you know that they they I feel and not to put anybody down. There's a lot of dads out there that do it more because oh they want to be part of the limelight. Oh they they're mm. afraid to to uh, let their son go and train better opportunities. No, my dad's not like that. My yeah. dad, it's he um he understands that a hey, if there's better opportunities. He's the type of person. You know what? Let me step aside. Let yeah. me be on the sideline a little bit. But it's my own personal, my yeah. own personal decision to always have him in my corner with me. Yeah. So, no, that's cool, yeah. man. Did you do any amateur fights? I know you said you did like fighting in high school and street yeah. fights and stuff. But did you do any like sanctioned amateur fights? Mm -hmm. So when I spar, this is something that's uh, for boxing coaches. I've had several boxing coaches assume that I had over a hundred amateur fights. The reality is, I only had thirteen amateur fights. The farthest I ever traveled was San Antonio, and that was only once. Wow. The reality is me and my dad did not know how important having an amateur record was mm. upon turning pro. Like I said, I, I stopped boxing. I had 13 amateur fights, 15 years old when I started. I stopped completely boxing at 18. I attempted to go to college. I wasted three semesters of my 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 uh, my, uh, my life because yeah. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I knew school wasn't for me. Yeah. Finally made the decision to open up a gym. I found a little spot, and uh, I I went full force on it. When I started the boxing program, I talked to my dad. Hey, dad, let's get boxing another try. Yeah. He said, okay. Well, let's, he actually told me, well, let's get a couple more amateur fights. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm already 19. Uh, I'm already. So you 20. had 13 amateur fights between uh -huh. the age of 15 and 18. And 18 yeah. Went to college for three semesters. Yeah. Stopped boxing completely, and then wanted to open up your own gym, mm -hmm. um, and then. That's when you decided to, yeah, I not was do amateur anymore. I was teaching teenagers, I was teaching teenagers and 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 younger kids. Yeah, and I said, what am I teaching if I'm never actually? I mean, I thought amateur. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I want to get the full. I want to be able to say, you know what, 
I fought at the pro level. Yeah. Is 13 a lot of fights for amateur? Not really. It's not? No, absolutely not. Man. No. Um, you have guys having 100 fights, 150 fights. A promoter won't look at you, Jeez, unless, you have, unless you have 100 fights. Minimum. Wow. I mean, there's there's some exceptions, you know, yeah. there's some exceptions, but it's not like we ever competed at an international level, yep. national level, but national, international. We didn't do any of that. Opportunity came. Um, they offered us a, a fight, a local fight, professional fight, a professional fight. I'm saying, hey, you know what? Let's do it. Yeah. My dad was really, really iffy about it, and uh, again, the goal was get in, get one pro fight, say I did it, yeah, and get out, get on with and, and continue and my business, continue teaching, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Needless to say, that fight day comes. I actually, there was a, I actually have the poster over there. <laughs> my first fight right there. And um, I had a, a lot of support. I had a lot of support. As a matter of fact, the promoter comes afterwards and says, hey, you guys are basically the main event. Wow. I remember walking out and uh, the crowd and everything. I said, it brought me back to, you know, my, my high school days when I was fighting yeah. in those backyards and stuff like that. Entertaining. And I said, you know, and I went back home and uh, me and my dad talked. You want to go one more? I'm like, yeah, let's go one more. And it's just, you know. <laughs> so they offered us another fight. That second fight was the first fight. It was a first TV fight under Golden Boy. Wow. And I fought a guy that was undefeated at 3-0. Three, 3-0 three and oh. Three and oh with one draw or something like that. I had one win. Guy was relatively taller than me. And uh, I said, well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to see if I'm, if I'm in position or not. Yeah. Boom. Again, we, we, got a, we got another win. Third fight, we got a win. Fourth fight, we got to win. Yeah. Fifth fight, we got to win. I'm like, hey, well, something is. Yeah, something's but, going right but, here. But, but again, again, I had only 13 amateur fights. I, I consider myself a baby in the sport, even though I'm 30 right now, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I've been, you know, there's kids that's, that, are, that are competing at amateur level since eight years old. You know, they come yeah. back, they're, they're 18, they have 100 plus fights, all that experience. I'll jump ahead. So uh -huh. that first loss, was at the Shakur fight? No, 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 no. Okay. No. So it was a, a local level. It was for a state title. Okay. And the promoter back in the day that was it was uh Andy Nicavasos. And I remember I told him, Hey man, I don't want to fight for a state title against and I said these words against uh, a, a, a you know, a taxi driver. Oh well, he's like, Do you have anybody in mind? I'm like, Well there's this guy that, you know, has mentioned my name a couple of times. You know, it was Edgar Cantu. Okay. <laughs> Edgar Cantu La Bestia. And me and La Bestia had fought in the amateurs. He had just won the ringside uh national tournament when I fought him. It was almost as if when I when I when I got matched up with him, uh, I ended up upsetting him in the amateurs. I beat this guy. Yeah, guy walked into the ring with like his ring title and <laughs> and he was kind of it was very intimidating. He had a you know mean stare, you know yeah. that kind of thing. I beat him in the amateurs. So I said I told man and I told my promoter hey, he's mentioned my name. He says he wants a rematch from that from the amateurs. Hey, let's yeah. give it to him. His record was six and one. Till this day, that's probably the fight that my favorite fight of my whole career. Mm. We went eight rounds. It was a back and forth, back and forth battle. And I had never been hit the way he hit me before. Wow. I had never experienced a knockdown. But let me tell you something about that fight. That fight told me told me a lot about myself. I discovered myself. I said, you know what? I'm the type of guy that I get knocked down and I'm gonna come at you yeah. more aggressive. And then for my upcoming fight after that, the same guy that beat me was offered a fight against a guy also by the last name of Tapia, but he was knocking the guys out. Like he was four and oh, five and oh, something like that. Okay. So sorry. No, you're okay. <laughs> and um, we got word that this guy, like I said, they don't want to fight him. So I said, you know what? He's not giving me a rematch. I need, I need to, I had a chip on my shoulder. Yeah. So I fought this guy and we ended up knocking, knocking him out in the fifth round. Wow. After that fight, I got I got I got an offer for, to fight Shakur Stevenson. Damn, that's a big jump, man. Yeah, big time. Because Shakur Stevenson was an Olympian at that time. He, he was, was, a, it, was yeah. it was early in his career. He yeah. was what maybe four and when you yeah. fought him. Mm -hmm. That was very early. But he was yeah. one of the big up and coming names. Even to now, I think he's yeah. like twenty and zero or something. He's he's considered right now as one of the pound for pound best. Right. I, as a matter of fact, I don't think anybody at one thirty five can can even come close to beat him. Yeah, not even Tank. I don't, I, I'll argue any, I'll argue wow. my points. Uh, he's just, uh, Shakur's, there's, there's always that one person, like Mayweather was the, the, the man in, in the 2000s, right? Right. You can't, you know, he's just so different breed. I think Shakur Stevenson's like that. When they offered me Shakur Stevenson, uh, I knew who he was because I'd seen the Olympics. Yeah. Um, I did my research on him. He was, he was, uh, the, his five fights that he had, uh, he was, blowing them out 
crazy. Was that your first fight out of Texas? Out of Texas. Damn, man. It was a big jump. Yeah, that was two uh, to, uh, was that in Vegas or no, Reno? It was right? in Reno, Nevada. Reno. Yeah. Wow, dude. So on paper, he had five fights. I had eight, not eight fights. On paper, who has more experience? Me, supposedly. Yeah. But yeah, they're but not he's, he's an Olympian. They're not he, counting. This guy had over uh, about 200 amateur fights. Wow. International international experience. He also fought for the WSB, which is a um, WCSB, something world class boxing. It's pretty yeah. much like a semi pro. Okay. And and uh, he had all that experience. I was. I had eight fights, 13 amateur fights so it's locally. Is it your 22nd fight ever? Yeah. Wow. I, in my head, I feel that I. I feel like I can beat anybody in my yeah. head. That's my problem. I think well, I should have. I mean, I should have waited. I should have waited. The, the, you know, had I um. I just have so much belief in myself. Yeah. You know, and I said, you know what, I told my dad, let's just take it. And my dad's always been one that you know, he'll make me think about it, but at the end of the day, he always support me. Said, hey, let's take it. Let's really see what we're made of, man. Yeah. You know, so we took it, and uh, remember, I had no experience. Not 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 nowhere near the experience this guy had. And um, <laughs> we had barely any sparring for that fight. Yeah, we had one guy that was helping us out. His name, uh, he's a local local guy, South Palm, and he was helping us a lot. Two weeks before the fight, right when the the two weeks of left of sparring, he had other things to do. I'm sure he got busy or something. So for the last two weeks of sparring, we we're sparring uh, a 15 year old. You know, there was we, there wasn't you know we didn't have an actual elite southpaw. Yeah. With the stature of Shakur and everything, this you know, so we ended up you know my coach said hey you know what a fighter's a fighter you can adapt to anything, and now I'm, I consider myself a whiz when it comes to weight cutting. Um, I know how to weight cut properly. I can cut twenty pounds in one week. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll I mean it's it's hell. Yeah. But back then I didn't know how to rehydrate. Did you fight him at one twenty six? I fought him at one twenty six. So okay. <laughs> here's the thing, right? So now I know the proper way to rehydrate. And one thing is to cut weight. You know, you're diminishing your body of nutrients, minerals. Your 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 brain essentially shrinks. Yeah. Right? That's why there's a lot of deaths in boxing because they don't know how to rehydrate properly. Mm. Your brain gets so small that there's so much space in your skull. You get hit, it starts doing basically bouncing around. Right? The first thing that I do, we were in, we were in Reno. And the first thing I, I do, I I was so hungry. I went to an Asian buffet. Wow. It was a, it was Asian a Asian buffet. It was it was a buffet, <laughs> international buffet. It had all, all sorts of things. What I do, I serve my a plate full of nothing but Asian food and a lot of um, rice I mean, and I, pasta. And yeah, I mean, it wasn't even pasta. It was a uh, well, it was pasta and noodles or whatever. But can you imagine? I mean, if one one goes to an Asian buffet right now, at the end of the at the end yeah. of your meal, you feel kind of bloated. Yeah. Can you imagine your stomach is like this? You just start feeding it, you know, all sorts of junk. Yeah. Uh, and, and I started eating cookies afterwards and, you know, yeah, I, I got IVs and, and, and I, I you hydrated as far as, you know, uh, you know, water intake. I was, yeah. I was good, but I didn't understand the effect of feeding your body yeah. the wrong food, what the effect was going to do. So yeah. I'm not making excuses. No, no, no. Sure. I'm not making yeah, excuses. That's, that's my question. How does that affect your actual okay, performance? So the day of the fight. And I, of course, I'm not one to tell anybody about my, but I'm gonna tell you right now. The day of the fight, I wake up and I'm dizzy, and um, I feel like I have no, no force. I felt sluggish. It's the it's a counter effect that you're, yeah. you're feeding your body, and especially uh, after cutting weight, you yes, you fill yes. it back up with yeah. junk. Yeah. Two hours before we left to the arena, I filled up the tub and I literally was just like neat, like right here, like in a little. Uh, fetus position in a way <laughs> just laying down just uh laying down i mean sitting down and thinking like damn i think i you know i don't feel good yeah i don't feel good I, I, in my head i'm like i'm gonna let a lot of people down and stuff I, I i was already wow you know destroying myself because i didn't feel good and uh come come fight night i said you know what fuck it you know let's let's go i'm already yeah. here not to give myself any any credit but i mean you see the way shakur outboxes Everybody, yeah. I'm talking about he outbox Valdez. He outbox. I mean, he destroys them. Shakur did not look like Shakur the day of the fight. Yeah. And everybody, oh, he wasn't Shakur. He he's more advanced now. Uh, yeah, I'm. I, I've advanced too. Right. My fighting IQ has gone up already too. Yeah, I was watching that fight. You were yeah. 
much more aggressive I think than he had ever seen somebody be yeah. towards him. His grandpa, the one time in Houston, his grandpa actually came up to us. My, my dad's right here, and he'll, he'll testify for me. He said, no, you guys are the trickiest fighters Shakur ever fought. And I'm not saying, like I said, I, to me that's an honor because yeah. had they known that I only had 13 amateur fights, had they yeah. known that, I mean, that's still an accomplishment, I feel. Yeah. No, I went sure. up I went up against a guy that's elite. Yeah. You know, and I took a chance. I really did take a chance. Yeah, and you went the full eight rounds. It went eight to rounds. a decision. It went to a decision. Yeah. And um, when he, the the fight afterwards, the so fights before he was knocking people out, the fight afterwards he destroyed a guy that was 12-0, 9-0, something like that. And uh, then he fought Pitufo, uh, Diaz from Puerto Rico, was a prospect. He destroys him. So, I mean, I give myself some credit. I, yeah. I held on. I, I, I was able to to run with the best, essentially. Yeah. No, oh, that's, that's crazy, man, to get that opportunity that Absolutely. early on when he's had tons of experience. <laughs> yeah. And it's early in your career, and you get yeah. to fight Shakur like that. Yeah, now get this, man. Check that out. A week before we left to, to to Nevada, Michael Buffer, I think he was already retiring. He was announcing his retirement or whatever. Yeah. Funny story, I believe in the law of attraction so much. And, I mean, that's a different topic, different conversation. We were in a garage, and I was talking to my brother. <laughs> I was talking to my brother, and we were uh, um, we had a pool table. And, uh, hey, you know, you know, I know. Did you hear about Michael Buffer? He's gonna retire already. He's, 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 damn it! And my brother tells me, I'm, "Damn it, dude! You didn't make it fast enough to get your name announced." And I said, "Nah, nah. That would be nice. Wouldn't that be nice if Michael Buffer announced my name?" So fight night for against Shakur. I no, I had no idea it was gonna be the announcer. Yeah. I'm there. I'm warming up. I hear somebody start start speaking. I'm like, wait a minute, that voice. Who's that? <laughs> oh snap! It's Michael Buffer. Dang. So I was star shocked. I was nervous. I was feeling sluggish. Wow. I mean. It was the first time that I ever, I mean, I was, I was just uh, in shock. Obviously, I had fought eight fights locally. You know, I didn't, I, this whole thing was so new to me. Yeah. I had never been in, the, in that stage before. So, I mean, like I said, I'm but, not giving but, but you didn't shy down from it. You was like, this is where I'm meant to be. I, I, like I said, I'm in that ring. It's you or me, and it's not going to be me. That's my mentality yeah. all the time. Of course, I got, I got out of box, especially, of course, Stevenson. But, hey, you know what? I fought Shakur Stevenson. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> you cool. know, I fought Shakur Stevenson.